Hey everyone, welcome to video tutorial of HTTP methods. In this tutorial, we'll see how you can make HTTP calls to external servers. These HTTP calls are non-blocking calls. That means you can make HTTP call from any method you define and the response will be handled in a specific HTTP handler, which is called as HTTP response handler. Right, so let's get in directly into the codes and see how it works. So first of all, go, we'll have to go to gupshop.io and then log in and go to my bot section. Let's say, let's create a new bot. Name it as HTTP demo. And the default code is shown so we'll just remove the default code so let's first make a simple HTTP get call so let's say if someone says date We'll make an API call to one of the server which gives out dates. So for that I have this testmaster.com slash json slash date json. We'll see how it looks. So if you make a get call it gives me the time and date looks like. So we'll just say context dot simple http dot make get and then we'll give the URL. So this context or simple HTTP dot make get is the method name. This is how you make a get call. Now the response of this get call will be sent to response handler. So here what we are going to do is we'll define a variable var date. Set equals json dot parse will parse the message so it's actually present in event dot get res which is for get response of that api call and we'll just say var date equals date check dot i guess it's date yes so dot date here we'll say today's date is a state. So let's deploy this and let's go to telegram to test it out. So we'll say proxy HTTP demo. And let's say date so you can see the date is passed out here it's not giving me today's date because the API which I'm calling is giving me some date uh, you can see here so this is how you make an HTTP get call uh, through the hosted code uh, you have to use this method make get now let's see how you can make an HTTP call uh, get call which requires you to pass an header along with the URL so for that we'll be using Gupshop's API which is for smart messaging. This API takes in uh, the, uh, the smart ID and then uh, also an API key in the header and it gives me a JSON which contains ID of the uh, a ID of the message and as well as payload uh, and the content. So uh, we'll parse out the content and display it to the user. So let's first copy the URL and paste it into our method. And now we'll uh, add the header here. A header has to go as a JSON object. So I'll just go over and copy the JSON as well. So it's already in the JSON format. So we'll just copy it and paste it into our code. Let's 
So the response of this API will again be sent to HTTP response handler. So what we are going to do is we are going to actually parse out this payload and its content. Let's just say object equals JSON parse let's get response and we'll again define a variable called context content and say object dot payload dot content let's cross check it if that's correct yeah it's content so now we will change the response to the user let's just say the question is and send the content let's just deploy this now let's test it out in telegram so the bot is already mapped so we'll just type date and it should give me the response yes the question is do you like ice cream so remember guys to make a get api call along with headers you need to actually use the context or simple http dot make get method and first first value would be URL and the next value would be the header which would be in JSON format and say if you needed to pass another uh, another header so you'll just separate it by comma and say maybe content type if you have to send so it would be like content type and then the value would be let's say application slash json so this is how you'll send the uh, another header along with api key right now let's see how you can make a post api calls let me show you what we are going to use for making a post call so we will again use gupshub's uh, smart messaging api and as parameter will be passing as destination and uh, a headers contains API key and content type and the response would be an array where you have these links so what we'll do is parse this embedded link and display it to the user so let's see how that would be done let me first remove this and this okay now i'll just make date to high and the method for say, uh, for making a post api call is simple http dot make post right and the first element would be the url so we'll copy the url from here we'll provide the url the ne next field would be the parameters so we'll just copy the parameters from here remember guys that the parameters value should be url encoded so if i had all those braces along with strands then it should be actually url encoded and sent and the last field field would be the headers so uh, in my last http get call i showed you how you can add multiple headers so here you can see another example where i am passing an api key and a content type so let's just copy this and paste it here so let me just break this down so that you have a better understanding uh, so in the post api first was the url second second was the parameters which the the api accepts and the headers which we needed to pass so now let's parse the response we'll go to http handler because the response would be sent to http handler and uh, so the response would be like this it's an array so we'll say define a variable saying object array which will be json dot parse 
event dot get response and since it's an array we'll have to actually form a loop pardon me plus we'll also define a variable link top just say set equals array and the element would be at position and link equals obj dot embedded link so the dot embedded link set and once that is done we'll send the link to the user once send the link to smart message plus link right so let's just deploy it. And we'll say here, hi. And it gives me the link of my smart message API call. So this is how you make a post API call. The method is simple HTTP post. If you have uh, parameters and headers to pass so the first element in the uh, in the method would be the URL the second element would be the parameters which should be URL encoded and the last would be the headers and it should be passed in as JSON you can have multiple headers inside that JSON right so I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial Thank you for watching. Bye.